Good morning, friends. Teacher Lori here. Happy day to you all. I hope you're having a great morning, whatever you're doing. If you're watching cartoons or eating breakfast or helping make your bed or sort some laundry, that's a good one. Help moms, dads, whoever your family is made up of, sort that laundry, do the dishes, you know, get some of those practical life skills in that we all like. Make sure you're practicing washing your hands, blowing your nose. I saw recently, actually, friends, how to teach blowing your nose because my daughter, Lucy May, um, is working really hard on that. And right now with everything, I want to make sure she knows how to blow her nose. And they said, another awesome mom on, when I did a search, said, have your child hold the Kleenex up and pretend they're a bull because a bull snorts and just with a Kleenex and that's how they taught their kid to blow their nose and I think her daughter actually came up with that and she's like six so smart idea so it was a great way to explain nose blowing little things little things but you practical those you practice those practical life skills today and no I'm thinking of you and today's book is one of my most favorite books I love all books but this one is it makes my soul happy. And when we can all get back together again and we can see each other or you can see your neighbors, you can go to church, you can go to the grocery store, you can go to school. Maybe we can remember the kindness that happens in this book. And that's why I love it so much. It's called Last Stop on Market Street, written by Matt D. La Pena, or Pena and pictures by Christian Robinson. And if I pronounce these authors' name wrong, I'm sorry. I'm still learning and working on a little bit of things myself, so... Bear with me. Well, let's get those circle time hands ready. Story time hands ready. We got to do it. Put them down. No. Put your hands up. Put your hands down. Thumbs up very slowly. Thumbs up very, very fast. Put your hands up. Put your hands down. Mama shark. Very slowly. Do, 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 do. Mom shark very fast. Do, 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 do. Put them in your lap. So I'm going to read this kind of slow today because I just really love the words in this book and the message that this book is telling us about how to be kind and be helpful to everybody in our community and in our neighborhoods. As Mr. Rogers says, it's a beautiful day in our neighborhood, regardless of what kind of neighborhood you're in. This is a great book. So use your good listening ears and let's get ready. CJ pushed through the church doors and skipped down the steps. The outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain, which wrinkled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. What does the air smell like to you today? Be mindful of that when you go outside, take a deep breath in. What does it smell to you? In this book, it smelled of rain and freedom. He ducked under his Nana's umbrella saying, how come we gotta wait for the bus and all this wet? Trees get thirsty too, as Nana told him. Don't you see that big one drinking through a straw? CJ looked for a long time, but he never saw a straw. From the bus stop, he watched the water pool on flower petals, watched rain patter against the windshields of a nearby car. His friend Colby climbed in and gave CJ a wave and drove off with his dad. Nana, how come we don't got a car? Boy, what do we need a car for? We got a bus that breathes fire. And old Mr. Dennis, who always has a trick for you. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and sagged and the doors swung open. It sighed and sagged and the doors. What's that I see, Mr. Dennis asked. He pulled a coin from behind CJ's ear, placed it in his palm. Nana laughed her deep laugh and pushed CJ along. They sat right up front. The man across the way was tuning a guitar. An old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a great big smile and a good afternoon. She made sure CJ did the same. So she greeted everyone around her with a smile and a good afternoon. You never know who needs just a simple good afternoon or smile. Let me see your smile. Let me hear your good afternoon. That brightens my day. I bet it would brighten anybody's day. The bus lurched forward and stopped, lurched forward and stopped. Nana hummed as she knit. 
How come we always got to go here after church, CJ said. Miguel and Colby never have to go nowhere. I feel sorry for those boys, she told him. They'll never have a chance to meet Bobo or the sunglass man. And I hear Trixie got a brand new hat. CJ stared out the window feeling sorry for himself. He watched the car zip by on either a side, watched a group of boys hop curbs on bikes. A man climbed aboard with a spotted dog. CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what do you know about seeing, Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. Some people watch the world with their ears. Just listen to that. That's a fact. Their noses too, man said, sniffing at the air. That's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, man. Nana squeezed the man, man's hand and laughed her deep laugh. And CJ did the nice thing because he got on the bus. He gave up his seat for him to sit there. Two older boys got in next. CJ watched as they moved on by and stood in back. Sure wish I had one of those, he said. Nana set down her knitting. What for? You got the real live thing sitting across from you. Why don't you ask the man if he'll play us a song? CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking strings and beginning to sing. To feel the music, ma uh, magic of music, the blind man whispered. I like to close my eyes too. Nana closed hers too. So did CJ and the spotted dog. Listening to the magic of music with eyes closed. Hmm. And in the darkness, the rhyme lifted CJ out of the bus, out of the busy city. He saw sunset colors swirling over crashing waves, saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky, saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. CJ's chest grew full and he was almost lost in the sound. And the sound gave him the feeling of magic. Song engine. And CJ opened his eyes. Everyone on the bus clapped, even the boys in the back. Nana glanced at the coins in CJ's palm. CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop on Market Street, Mr. Dennis called. CJ looked around and stepped off the bus. Crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors, graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached for Nana's hand. Come, it's always so dirty over here. She smiled and pointed to the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what's beautiful. His Nana is very smart, isn't she? CJ saw the perfect rainbow arching over their soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana always found beautiful where he never thought to look. He looked around again at the bus rounding the corner out of sight and the broken street lamp still lit up bright and the stray cat shadows moving across the wall. When he spotted their familiar faces in the windows, he said, I'm glad we came. He thought his Nana might laugh, her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, me too, CJ. Now come on. And then they're waiting for the bus again. So they took the bus and went and served others a meal that needed some food. What can we do today to serve kindness for others in the comforts of our own home? Think about that. Could we call? Could we wave out the window as people, as people are walking? Could you take a side piece of sidewalk chalk and maybe draw hearts or smiley faces all the way down your street and up? Maybe brighten the day of somebody around you whoever's in your home with you. How about you? These are good thoughts. Thank you for reading, listening to that story with me today. It's one of my favorites. Okay, let's catch our bumbles. Bzz. Let's get ready to let him go. Bring it home a baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? Bring it home a baby bumblebee. <gasps> it stung me. Talking to my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm talking to my baby bumblebee. They said, you're right. I'm sorry. Can I help you? Do you need an ice pack? Do 
you need a hug? Will you be my friend? Lots of things. I let go of my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I let go of my baby bumblebee. They're happy to be free. Thanks for letting your bees go with Amina this morning. Have a great day. Love you. See you tomorrow.